Hey animal enthusiasts and fellow herpetologists, it's Joel here, and today we're going to be talking about one of Southern California's most venomous snakes. Let's get into it. Meet the Southern Pacific Rattlesnake, Crotalus oreganus hellerii, a subspecies of the Western Rattlesnake. This venomous pit viper is a misunderstood but vital predator of the American Southwest, native to Southern California from Santa Barbara down to the middle of the Baja California Peninsula. They are found in a variety of habitats, including chaparral, rocky hillsides, open woodlands, grasslands, agricultural areas, and suburban areas occasionally entering backyards and buildings. When it comes to appearance, they are heavy bodied with a thin neck, a distinct triangular head, and of course, the signature rattle at the end of the tail. They typically range from 2.5 to 4 feet long as adults, and 7 to 10 inches as neonates. Scales are distinctive and very heavily keeled. The pupils are elliptical for ambush predation in low light conditions. They also have two pits, one on each side of the front of the head used to sense heat for hunting warm-blooded prey, making them pit vipers in subfamily Crotalinae. They are highly variable in terms of coloration, ranging from black, gray, and brown tones to even olive green. Along the back are dark blotches outlined by light pigments, eventually turning to black bars towards the tail. The underside is pale and occasionally lightly modded. Neonates are born with a bright yellow tail with a pre-button instead of a rattle, which does not make a sound. After around two weeks from birth, they will shed their skin for the first time and add a new scale segment. As they age, they will lose the yellow color and gain more rattle segments with each shed. Like other rattlesnakes, the southern Pacific rattlesnake is ovoviviparous. This means they give birth to live young rather than laying eggs. Mating occurs in spring and summer, and females give birth in late summer to around 4-12 to 12 neonates. Males will have wrestling-style matches to compete for females during the mating season, as well as other times. Differences between males and females can be very subtle in this species. Oftentimes, to determine sex, researchers and veterinarians will have to restrain the rattlesnake by tubing, then probing it for determining the presence of hemipenes and number of subcaudal scales. This restraint method also allows the vet or researcher to take cloacal temps, perform ventral coccygeal vein blood draws, and determine overall health. It should be noted that this should only be performed by professionals with experience and that this was done under scientific permits. When it comes to behavior, they are primarily nocturnal and crepuscular during the summer heat but also active during the day in cooler months when temperature is more moderate. During winter, they will brumate in burrows and crevices. Their daily activities include actively moving in search of prey, or by laying in one place for extended periods of time, sometimes days, in a coiled position waiting to ambush prey. Their diet typically shifts with age. Juveniles feed mostly on smaller prey such as lizards, frogs, and insects, while adults go for rodents, rabbits, birds, and other snakes. Interestingly, Adult California ground squirrels are immune to the rattlesnake venom and often confront snakes entering burrows in search of squirrel pups that have not yet developed the proteins for venom resistance. Similarly, Virginia opossums also have a high degree of resistance to rattlesnake venom, though a different mechanism. These are two great examples of an evolutionary arms race. To subdue prey, they use their two large movable fangs to swing forward and quickly stab and inject the animal with a toxic venom. This immobilizes the prey and breaks down tissues for easier digestion after consumption. For humans, a bite from any rattlesnake regardless of size or age should be treated as a medical emergency. Although sometimes they don't inject venom during a bite, dry bites may still require medical attention. Despite being venomous, these rattlesnakes still fall prey to many predators including king snakes, hawks, roadrunners, bobcats, coyotes, and humans. When threatened, the snake will shake its tail back and forth, causing the rattle segments to rub together, producing the iconic rattle sound that serves as a warning to predators. They are important members of the natural community and will not willingly attack or be aggressive to humans, but if they are cornered or disturbed, they will defend themselves. Much of the time, however, they would rather slither off to a nearby hiding spot before attempting to bite if they are threatened. Many people often confuse harmless and beneficial gopher snakes for rattlesnakes due to their ability to flatten their head, hiss, and rattle their tail in dry leaves. Unfortunately, this often leads to them being unnecessarily killed 
despite being non-venomous and helpful in controlling pests. In truth, no snake, regardless if it's venomous or not, should be killed out of fear or misunderstanding. Education is key to ending the stigma and helping people coexist with these important animals. The more we understand, the more we can appreciate the vital role they play within our lives. With that being said, if you find a rattlesnake in your yard or home, or if you can't see enough detail to confirm it's not a rattlesnake and have doubts that the snake is harmless, stay calm, keep a distance of at least 10 feet, and immediately remove pets and children from the area. If the snake is in your backyard, it will usually leave on its own if given space and time. If it's inside your home, open the nearest door to provide an escape route and monitor from a safe distance. For persistent or concerning situations, it's best to contact animal control or a professional snake removal service who can safely relocate the animal. If snakes are frequently appearing in your yard, it may help to investigate the underlying cause. For example, an abundance of rodents, often attracted by birdseed or grain, can create a reliable food source, encouraging snakes to return. Addressing the rodent issue can greatly reduce snake activity in the area. So yeah guys, that is pretty much all about the Southern Pacific Rattlesnake. If you learned something new, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for more wildlife education. Thanks for watching, and remember, knowledge is the antidote to fear. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.